she has always hit them when they take them away. She take them for, not for too long, only for a couple of days. The kids come back with, with, with bruises, things ugly, and they're my children. It hurts me a lot that the harm is done to my kids. So I was really concerned. I didn't know what to do. I went to the school. I didn't know anything about my kids. I called the police. The police told me that I should go to family court. I was really concerned because I know that she's a bad person with my kids. She hits them in a way that is horrible and it hurts me a lot that I cannot do anything. I cannot help my children. So in today's video, we have a father begging for help from the courts. This dad is seeking a TPO against his children's mother. This hearing discusses CA. If you find this triggering, please click off now and I'll see you in the next video. For those that have decided to stay, let's get into the video. I've sworn you in, so if y'all both raise your right hand. Y'all swear for the testimony about to give is the truth told truth, nothing but the truth. Usted jura decir la verdad y nada más que la verdad en este testimonio. Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Reed's going to be a witness, correct? Yes, Judge. Okay. All right, Ms. Reed, uh, I'm going to just place you. Are you going to take her out of turn, Mr. Gillespie? So she I could. Her. That would be fine. Okay. Ms. Reed, you swear for her testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. So Ms. Chavez is going to translate, uh, uh, interpret in real time. So just, you know, a steady pace. Just keep an eye on her, Ms. Reed. If you see her do like this, just slow down, okay? Um, so we can go ahead and Ms. Chavez, you can just let him know that we're going to start with Ms. Reed out of turn so that she can be excused. All right, ma'am, you just listen. They're going to tell us what happened and you'll get to ask questions, okay? Yes, what about my um, witness? As long as your witness stays out of the room, we can hear from them, but the witness can't be in the room with you. Okay. Okay. All right. So listen, let them go and then you'll go. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Gillespie. Thanks, Judge. Yeah, we're here on the, the matter of Obeth Lanche Bustos versus Denitria Kilpatrick, uh, case number 2023CV375158. This is a uh, family violence uh, protective order. Um, and, and, before us today uh, is, uh, is, is is a witness, Nina Reed. Um, Ms. Reed, if uh, if you could uh, briefly describe uh, if and how you know uh, the Bustos um, Lanche family. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Um, I'm Nina Reed. I'm the associate director of La Amistad. We are a 501c3 nonprofit in the city of Atlanta that serves Latino students through an after school program. Uh, the three Lanche Bustos students have been with our program since this year. Um, I've had an opportunity to work with them one on one. And um, as part of our program, parents come and pick up the students every day after tutorial is finished. And that is how I've gotten to know um, Mr. Lanche Bustos as well. And and so you've worked with uh, these three kids more or less uh, almost every day of school uh, for the past year. Is that right? Yes, sir. Four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Okay. And at any time during uh, uh, this uh, past year that you've been working with these kids, has there ever been a time when the kids were not attending school? Um, most recently, yes, um, when the children returned, well, when it was time for the children to return uh, from their holiday break uh, in December, the students were not present um, at, at school or at after school. And uh, when, when did the kids finally return to school? Uh, the two young boys returned, if I remember cor correctly, it was uh, a week after school had resumed. And Celine, their their daughter returned last Monday. And what is your understanding of of why they had missed so much school? Um, well, Mr. Bustos uh, explained to me that um, when we were concerned that the students were missing after school, um, 
uh, reached out to him and he explained that the children had gone to visit uh, their mother over the Christmas break um, and that they were supposed to return in time for two of the children's birthdays, which also happened to be in December. Um, but that was not the case. He was expressed being deeply concerned about the fact that he um, was struggling to communicate with the mother. And um, he was also very distraught because he believed that there was the harm happening to the kids, physical harm, or which time he showed me some photographs that he had taken. Um, I, prior to my role here at La Mistad, I worked with Atlanta Public Schools. So I have very strong partnerships and connections, especially at the school uh, where the students attend. And um, I was able to speak to some of the staff there, particularly the social worker at the school who had also been working with Mr. Bustos, um, trying to understand where the children were, when they were going to return to school, whether or not they were even enrolled in school um, during the time that they were absent. And so during this most recent episode where, where, where the kids were missing, uh, did you have an opportunity uh, to to talk with the kids about what, what their experiences, what, what had happened, what was going on? Um, I did not have a chance to speak to them personally. I think it's a kind of a tenuous area um, for me to step into. I was a little bit hesitant and I didn't know if it would be appropriate for me to have conversations with the kids uh, outside the presence of, of a family member or another person. Um, I will tell you that I did accompany um, Mr. Bustos to the police precinct um, here to file a missing persons report. And we did uh, speak to um, the sergeant there who, who placed a call. We were able to reach mom um, and we were told that the student would be returned. The one student that had, hadn't been returned or child, I should say, they're students to me, um, that evening. And that did not happen and another week went by. So um the boys um, did ask me, is Selena coming home? And um, they seemed anxious and excited for her to get home. And um, that was pretty much the extent of my conversation with the kids. Again, I do not have the de details of what is happening. Um, and I want to just be very cautious and protect the health and well-being of the students. So, Understood. And based on your training and experience, um, did you during those times that they were absent, did, was it your impression that they were uh, under good care and being treated well? You said during the time that they were absent? That's correct. Uh, hard to say, Mr. Gillespie. I, I can honestly say that their father was very distraught and showed some pictures, and which is why I kind of took the extra step um, to be in contact with the school. Uh, par our parents sign a waiver that allow us to have open communication uh, with school and staff personnel um, regarding the families that we serve. Um, and apparently there have been multiple uh, interactions with DFACs and, and other agencies in regards to the well-being of the children. Um, I don't know how relevant it is. Uh, and it totally just working with the children. Um, I am concerned that um, they are experiencing challenges. Um, it's it's obvious in, in working with them that um, that they are struggling um, with their learning as as well as their behavior. Um, and there seems to be um, some some social and emotional challenges there as well. And we do measure those daily in our program. We have a mood meter where the students check off a. a face that's happy or sad or tired. Um, and generally, um, they will express um, less than happy feelings, which is a little bit concerning. And we do what we can. But um, those are kind of my observations on a day to day basis with the students, not only my own, but those of uh, the staff members that also work with the students. Based on your training and experience, uh, are, are you able to determine whether the kids suffered any abuse while they were uh, outside of their, their father's home and while, while the mother had absconded with the children? I have to be honest, I have not, I have not observed it. We're, we have a very strict child protection policy, which would prohibit me from examining the students in any way um, physically um, and be able to, to see if there, if there was any uh, mistreatment or at least physical mistreatment of, of the children um, during the time that they were away. Um, 
And furthermore, because their uh, absence was extended um, beyond the prescribed time or the agreed upon time, I, I don't know what could have happened in that window. Did you see the, any of the pictures that Obeth showed you of the abuse? I did. And, and what was your impression of those pictures? It was troubling. Um, bruises. Um, he showed a photograph of um, undergarments that were soiled um, and things that um, were troubling. Uh, I also happen to know that the kids um, have moved from Bolton Academy, which is another Atlanta public school school, also close to our programming, programming location to E-Rivers. Um, and um, I'm just grateful that the kids have a community of people that care for them. So. Um, do you feel that uh, the, the children that uh, the children are well taken care of by Mr. Lunche? I I do. Um, I remember uh, sometimes the kids, the boys especially, will act up, and um, I've talked to Mr. Lanche a couple of times, and he's always uh, extremely responsive. He will speak to them firmly and clearly on the spot. Um, they come every day. He seems to be a really affectionate parent. He hugs and kisses the kids and um, seems to be really working hard to do the best that he can as a single dad to raise three kids. Um, and, and you mentioned that this was not, not the first time that the, the children had been absent for, from school. Could you describe uh, any other times um, actually, I don't think that I said that. I think that's the only time that I personally was aware. I came into our Trinity program um, after its start date um, because we had some staff transitions there and I was able to, to cover for an extended period of time. But prior to that period, um, I'm not certain, although I probably could check attendance and find out. Um, but I was not, I'm not sure I can check though. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the court? Uh, uh, Amir, Obeth, and Selena are really incredible children. Um, they're struggling. I think that they, they need as much stability as possible. Uh, Obeth is in our special education program, and he really needs some, some consistency, some consistency in our program where we can give him the remediation and support that, that he needs to be able to move forward academically. Um, and this is my personal opinion and also my experience working in this, in this space that um, uh, all of the children um, have the potential to be happy and thriving um, young people. Um, but I can tell that they're, that they're meeting a little bit of, um, I, like I said, just some stability. And um, as far as Mr. Blanche, I, I think that he's a loving and caring parent. Um, I know he's been through a lot and, at the risk of embarrassing him, I and mean, he's cried tears about his children and not knowing where they are and having sleepless nights. Um, and that that was difficult because um, I'm a mom and I know how hard that is. Um, and I'm just really grateful that uh, that they're they're with him. And I really hope that the court can do something to at least um, ensure that the kids can have the kind of consistency in schooling as well as support support services. Um, throughout the, the rest of the school year and, and going forward. What, in your opinion, is the source, source of instability in their lives? I think just from my observation, I think there have been some, some changes in their living situation. I think that now um, Mr. Lanches is, is living in with family and um, it happens to be a, a community that I'm super familiar with. It's been there for a while. Um, and uh, it seems that um, they're not being able to come home, return, um, go back to school. And like I said, I don't, I don't know enough. I would be hesitant to, to point a finger at anyone, but my understanding is when they are traveling with their mother, um, just not being able to come home in a timely way, missing their birthdays, the holidays, um, things like that uh, seems to be kind of bringing a lot of instability for them. Very good. Thank you. No, uh, no further questions at this time.
Bustos, do you have any relevant questions to ask of Ms. Reed? Yes. Um, Obeth told me, I talked to Obeth. He told me to pick Selena up on her birthday. Ms. Bustos, Bustos, hold on. Okay. A question for Ms. Reed is like this. Ms. Reed, what is your occupation? Okay. That is, it's directed to Ms. Reed about these children, not a conversation between you and he, okay? This is questions from Ms. Reed. Specifically, all she seems to know is about the children and the education. Okay. Okay? So direct those questions to Ms. Reed, please. I was just, okay. I was wondering, the question is, my kids... I love my kids, but at the same time, my kids was in school down here, was enrolled down here, and Mr. Beth knew. I want to know, did y'all knew? We did not, and neither did the school that they currently attend. There's a withdrawal process where the students' records and academic records can be moved from one school to another. So nobody was aware, including the social workers, front office staff, or our program that the students were enrolled in, in school. Question? Ms. Reed, I already talked to the school myself personally and the caseworker and the therapist. They all knew they Bustos. sent me oh, no, no, Ms. Bustos, you're telling her something. Okay. You need to ask another question. Okay. Um, question, did you know that I already talked to the school and the school knew? about everything, especially the uh, therapy. Do you know if talked to the school? Okay, yes. Um, I was not aware that you spoke to the school because I called as well to um, find out if the students had returned and they said that they were not aware of where the children were. Next question, Ms. Bustos. Your Honor, this is the interpreter. Oh, no, no, never mind. I, I thought I had missed uh, Mr. Obeth, but he said, never mind. Okay, that's all right. Go ahead, Ms. Bustos. Next question for Ms. Reed. Did you know about the kids' whereabout and the time uh, when they was with me? We did not have any information at all. The only information that we had was by from Mr. Lanche. When we asked, do you know where they are? He said he did not. He did say he knew that they were with you. Um, and, um, that was the extent of where we knew that the children were. We knew they were with you. We had no idea where or anything like that. Next question. Um, did you know that I was communicating with Mr. Obeth uh, about all this when it was going on? Yes. She doesn't know what happens between you and Mr. Boost. Uh, Ms. I'm sorry. Okay, so specifically about the children, specifically about the education. Okay. Did you um, did you know that the school sent me over Selena's paperwork and to transfer her from um, E Rivers to Spoiling? At the time that I communicated with the school, no, ma'am. Okay. You have no further questions. Question. No further. Anything else, Mr. Gillespie? None for this witness, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Reed, and thank you for the work that you do with the, our young children. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good luck. All right, Mr. Gillespie. Yeah, uh, now I'd like to call Mr. Lanche. All right. So, Ms. Chavez, tell me how you want to handle this. I'll go back and force you on. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Lanche, uh, is he already sworn in? Yes, they both were. Okay, great, great, great. Um, it, Mr. Lanche, if you could just describe very generally the, the difficulty you have been having in. I think they were, yeah. Let's see, I'll raise your right hand. Sorry, maybe not, just in case. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Raise your right hand, Obeth. Levante la mano derecha. ¿Usted jura que el testimonio que va a dar va a ser la verdad? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Gillespie. Let, uh, just double down on that because I remember that's, that's fine. I, okay. I, I totally agree. Um, oh, Beth, if you could just describe uh, in in very broadly in general um, uh, the the structure struggles you've been having uh, in, in co-parenting uh, with Ms. Bustos or Ms. Kilpatrick over the last few years? Uh, my kids have been with me for uh, since 2000, uh, since uh, six years. Continue. Okay. And, uh, the last time that the children took on December the 22nd, the mother, she took them. She started. She didn't tell me she was going to bring them or anything. I was calling her and she never answered. She had me blocked, I think. And the day the kids were going to start school, and I was really concerned, I didn't know what to do. I know the mother. She, she has always hit them when they take them away. She take them, for, not for too long, only for a couple of days. The kids come back with, with, with bruises, things ugly. And they're my children. It hurts me a lot that the harm is done to my kids. So I was really concerned. I didn't know what to do. I went to the school. I didn't know anything about my kids. I called the police. The police told me that I should go to family court. I was really concerned because I know that she's a bad person with my kids. She hits them in a way that is horrible and it hurts me a lot that I cannot do anything. I cannot help my children. So a week went by and then she called me and she told me that I was never going to see the kids again. And that was make me feel really bad. So I received a call two weeks ago, two weeks ago of a person, a woman. And she told me that, I'm sorry. She gave me two kids, Omiri or Beth, and other person called me that. Can you take the kids? She told me she was going to bring them at seven. Oh, don't, pardon, donde? Donde? And she came at seven in the morning. But Selena was not there. So I got really concerned. I said, what happened? And, she, and, they, and she told me, Obed, they told me what happened. Selena wanted to come, but the mom, my mom won't let Selena come and start hitting her because Selena wanted to come. And I said, okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do something about it, I said. So I took them to the school, then Wednesday, Tuesday, I don't remember the date exactly, so a week had passed of school. The next Wednesday, I took them to school. I talked to the uh, social worker that they didn't bring the child. I was worried the mom wouldn't answer. And afterwards, Selena told me that Selena was going to put another school. I, she wouldn't let me talk to her. I knew something bad was happening. I was really concerned. I didn't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know where she was. I don't know. I wanted to know where my daughter was. She wouldn't let me talk to her. She let me talk to her, but the voice was very different of my daughter. I know my daughter. And she, I told her, Mom, Mommy, Daddy's going to bring you home. If I, I didn't let her talk because she was going to cry and she was, she was going to hit her. So I hung up. Eight days later, I receive another call, like one in the afternoon. The same person that brought me the children before, she told me, I'm going to bring Selena. And I said, fine. She can you come in an hour? I said, yes, of course. I'll wait for you in a place and brought me her to the same place. She was in a bad shape, my daughter. The clothes was not her. The pants were tight. She was dirty. I really, cons I sad to say this, but her, uh, uh, in a uh, moment, her, um, her, uh, 
Her sexual air, um, vaginal area was re really dirty. The underwear was really dirt, uh, dirty. So I told her I was going to bathe you. I bathed her. She started crying that it was burning there, the, the female parts. It was burning. And I said, it's fine. My mom wouldn't bathe me. So I bathed her. She was crying. And I, I told him, I asked my aunt to, to come to the bathroom and she, and she changed her clothes and she started crying. And I started being in bad shape because I knew, I knew what was happening to her. I said, mom, my mom will hit me. And she, with the fist, she hit me in my face, my nose. She bleed my nose, my eye. My eye got like this, swollen. And my mom would put ice at night. It would hurt a lot. And my mom would hit me. It didn't matter. And I would do videos. She asked me to do videos the, saying that I didn't want to go with dad, that I didn't want to go home. If I wouldn't say that, my mom would hit me. Once she, the person called me, the psychologist of the school, and she and he asked me if I had brought Selena, and I said no, please don't call, because if you call, they're gonna hit her. And that's what happened because my daughter told me, the person from the school called, asked questions, and she called home, and my mom will tell me in the ear what I should say when she hung up. My mom hit me. They said, it's fine. I don't know what I'm going to do, but this time I'm going to do something to help you. Because this is affecting my children a lot. I know they need assistance, psycholo psychologic, Selena even more. But I'm helping her a lot in a way that to, for her to be happy, to be happy. She wouldn't go out to play outside because she thought the mom was going to come out and take her away. And I said, no, I'm going to be there with you. That's very sad. She didn't want to go out. I had to go with her holding hands. Nobody's coming, I said. And she said, please call the police, dad. No, nobody's coming, I will tell her. Just be, be calm. My daughter is suffering a trauma really bad. I don't know why the mother, she lies. I had different hearings and I have evidence that she hits them in a really bad shape. My daughter and the three of them, and she hits them together and she let other people hit them. I just, I don't want her to have damage my kids anymore. And she's, and they're learning. And my kids don't, they all have no concentration. Their mind is like, and I said, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to do what is possible for you to be happy. Do you understand? I try to help my kids in the, in the best I can and everything for them to be clean, well-dressed, to eat every day. I cook them every day. I work the 8 to 4 uh, PM, I go pick them up. When I come home, 10 minutes, I make the food. I, they always have the food ready. But on the other side, on the mother, nothing. She doesn't help absolutely in anything instead of helping them. She doesn't take them a long time, only two days or the holidays. That's two years ago she took them and, and they came back. I had to take them to the hospital, the three of them, because they were all beat up, beat up, beat up in a very bad shape, horrible. And they, they dropped the charges against her. I couldn't get an attorney. She hit the children. So to say that I had hit her, but, she, but Selena hit the eye and the eye of the other child and it got swollen. But the mother hit the children. They made the children say that I was the one hitting them. I went to the jail for uh, I went to the uh, jail for eleven days, and I had to pay eleven thousand dollars, three hundred. 
that case is open. That's why I couldn't get an attorney to help me in the case. But the, that case was closed on December 18th. I didn't do anything and pay all that money. The case was closed. Now, I took this attorney, the gentleman that is helping me right now in this case, because I'm tired. I'm tired to my kids to be beating up. I don't want her to beat my kids anymore. I have evidence. And I can show them to you. Okay. That, 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 that's okay. good for right now. Um, I, 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 and, and, and then very, very briefly, Judge, uh, if, if we oh. could just, I can do this quickly. Boss. I'm kind of tangled here with phone and everything. I can't see that. You're choking yourself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> señor. Escucha solamente. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so you had, you had testified that you had had uh, multiple um, kind of bad experiences uh with with Ms. Kilpatrick uh, previously, uh, I do have a uh, a police report dated September fourth of twenty nineteen, uh, in which uh, it, it it describes a situation in which um, your uh, Denitria had essentially she was going to take the kids to uh, Lake Lanier. Uh, but it was too cold that day, and and she didn't she didn't like you getting involved, and so she uh, um, repeatedly hit you across the face, uh, but but you did not retaliate, uh, and she did all that in front of the kids. Is is is, is that a correct uh, statement? Is this the uh, police report that you had filed that day on September of 2019? You know, um, yes, is correct. Okay. And then again, on June 16th of 2021, a very similar uh, scenario uh, where um, you had taken the children to a park and uh, she was distressed about something. And though, and so once again, uh, she uh, repeatedly uh, punched you in the face in front of the kids and you didn't retaliate. Is this June 16th, 21 report? Uh, uh, is this your recollection of you filing this report? Yes, I do remember, and she took the way the kids away, and uh, she took the kids to her house and hid them. Okay. Mr. And can, can I interrupt you for a second? Please. Is is there another case pending, also a modification or custody or? No, Judge. No, Judge. I think this is the kind of the. the he kind of described his he's he's had a little difficulty getting a decent legal representation. I think there was a language barrier. Um, I'm here. I feel like I, I'm, I can do a pretty good job with this. I think this is the most essential first step is is to uh, um, put a stop to this abuse. And I, I can I can really cut to the chase real quickly. Okay. There's there's okay. a, a dozen. Do you plan on filing something more yes. permanent? OK, OK. Yes, Judge. Uh, I do. Um, but 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 I really I was kind of adamant uh, to Mr. Lanche that this 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 had to happen first and then we can deal with the, all, everything else secondarily. Um, uh, Mr. Lanche, you did describe uh, that 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 recent event in which uh, the, you know, the mother had had absconded with the kids. And then when when they came back, they were covered in bruises um, and, and you you had taken pictures of their bruising. And I wanna show you these pictures initially, just if you could uh, validate whether or not they're uh, fair and accurate representations of the pictures you had taken. And then and then I'll admit them and I'll attempt to move, move to get them admitted into evidence. And then um, we can talk about them. So first things first, I'll show you pic taken uh, recently of of Selena. It's it's very hard. I recognize on on Zoom to see the bruising on Selena's legs uh, and and on her behind. Um, but but are are these fair and accurate uh, representations of the pictures you had taken of the bruising that Selena had suffered when she was recently returned from her mother? Casa de la madre. 
Okay, and judge at this time, I would like to enter these pictures in collectively as plaintiff's exhibit A. Uh, I see the time now. Go ahead. Yes, those are the photographs that I took when the kids came back from their mom's house. Okay, thank you. Any objection to the admission of the pictures? Ma'am, any objection? Yes, um, I don't know nothing about those pictures. I went to court several times. He showed them same pictures years ago and before, and I told him, the judge, that's why I was dismissed, because I never seen those pictures before. I just had a baby. I've been in and out the hospitals. I got proof of, I've been in a car accident. My back messed up. My spine is messed up. I go to a spinal to get shots in my spine. I don't know nothing about those pictures. And I told them before, I never seen those pictures. I never had one. Selena was here. Selena told me that she didn't want to go home. That's why I didn't take Selena home. Selena was never beaten. I got proof that I sent um, food over there. I sent $700 worth of food. I give him gas because he don't want to meet me halfway. So I had to come down the street to Publix and give him money, $20 and up to put gas in his car. Obey used to beat me. That's why I left him. I didn't want to be beaten on anymore. He always said I beat my... Okay, they're admitted. Go ahead, Mr. Gillespie. Thanks, Judge. And... Um... Uh, you, um, oh, Beth, you also took pictures of, of the bruising of your son, Amir, as well, who's presently seven years old. And I'm just going to show you very briefly uh, uh, some pictures of bruising. And I'm only going to ask you very quickly if these uh, are fair and accurate representations of the pictures you had taken of your son, Amir, uh, following uh, um, that time that uh, the defendant had had Amir. So, so, so. So very quickly, uh, do you recognize the pictures of Amir and the bruising that's shown on his legs? So yes. Too sensitive because it's streaming. Yes. So none of his genitalia. Uh, there is I'm, a police report of what he, of what she, uh, of that event too. Okay. If there is, you can just. Yes, I understood. Uh, and and uh, what was the answer? He said yes. Yes, okay, there is a, and there is a police report. Of that event and the forensic police, forensic police, que dijo la policía forense? And, and forensic came to take a photograph also. Okay. okay. And I, Judge, I would like to enter these in as plaintiff's exhibit. And I took them to the hospital really quick because the kids couldn't sit down. Okay. All right. They're admitted. Thanks, Judge. And then last, uh, Judge um, Obeth, I want to uh, show you very quickly uh, pictures you had taken of your son, Obeth Jr., uh, who's presently nine years old, of, of the bruising here. Um, and I, I understand your, your comment there, Judge, so I'm going to just quickly filter that out. Is it, um, is this, just give me five seconds, I want to just make sure I don't put a wrong picture on there. Da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, you need to put I, a post-it or something to cover up anything that yeah no I think I think I I think okay I took out the, the objection ones. Um uh, I assume the rear end is okay. It's just the, the genitalia that's the right, problem. Uh, Obeth, is this is this your son, Obeth Jr., the bruising that he suffered on his legs and, and, and behind yes. uh, from that person? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Judge, I would like to enter these in as plaintiff's exhibit C. They're admitted. Thanks, Judge. Um, and so just to conclude, just for the, the thoroughness of the record, um, I, I was going through all the uh, various incident reports. Uh, I think I, I, I think I left off on the, uh, the June 16th, uh, 2021 visit. Uh, so th the next one was, uh, was again on August 1st, 2021. Uh, Mr. Lanche, did, did you on that date, um, uh, this was this was simply a, a, the date. This was the date at which uh, the children were re returned to you, and they came home battered and bruised. Do you do you recall uh, filing this incident report on August first of twenty twenty one? Yes, 
Yes, oh. yes. Okay. And then and then I see uh, next in the file was August 2nd. Uh, so right, right on the tail of that most recent incident report, it looks like you had um, gone to the... Uh, um, to, to defects and they they had prepared a report to ensure that um, that that they don't have to suffer any additional abuse. Do you remember uh, defects after that incident preparing a Georgia safety plan? <laughs> yes, they always place charges. Okay, and do you remember? And they will take them away. A and, month later. And, and do you remember them preparing a safety plan? I, I think so. I think I took them over there. I think I remember. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yes. After school, I would take them to safety plan, but it was not it was not good at all because the mom, after school the mom would come and pick them up. Okay. Uh, at this, at, he he does recall that. So at this time, Judge, I would like to enter in this safety plan as Plaintiff's Exhibit D. Admitted. Okay. Okay, and and I'll I'll just uh, stipulate for the record, just because it's it's hard to read through the uh, lens here, but uh, it, it it simply reads, uh, Obeth Lanche will care for the three children uh, full time, uh, and the children will not return to Dianitra Lanche pending law enforcement action uh, because of physical abuse. Obeth Lanche is to call the police if Ms. Uh, uh, Dianitra uh, uh, arrives at the residence uh, and he will uh, uh, attempt to, it says, follow up with the Superior Court about obtaining a protective order. That's what that's what it says, so mm -hmm. that's admitted. Uh, and, and, and Judge, it, it, it continues, there was another Georgia safety plan essentially stipulating the same thing. Uh, oh, Mr. Lanche, do you recall uh, defects doing a second follow-up safety plan in December of that year, 2021, um, as well? Do you recall that? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I would like to tender this into evidence as Plaintiff's Exhibit E. Yes, admitted. Okay, and and again, just because of the challenges of of reading this thing with my my terrible lens camera thing here, I'll just stipulate for the record that this says that the children are being physically abused by the mom. It says mom will have no contact with the children until further notice. Uh, it says children are not supervised properly with the mom. Mom will have no contact with the children until further notice. Children are not provided with food, clothing, or shelter while in the care of mom. Mom will have no contact with children until further notice. It's dated 12-3-21, and it's uh, signed by uh, case manager Edmund. So that's that. And then, and then Judge, the, finally, uh, in terms of exhibits, uh, Mr. Lanche, uh, do you recall attempting to uh, uh, get a protective order uh, in November of, of 2022? Yes, yes. And, and, um, and, that, and that protective order was dismissed because you were not properly, you were not able to properly serve uh, Dianitra, is that correct? Um, I lost him on the phone. All right, now he's back. I gotta do the call. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, I. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and is the reason why there was lack of services because when uh, Dinitra takes the children, she doesn't tell you the address where she's taking the kids? Senor? That's correct. Okay. All right, thanks. So, uh, I mean, that scare me. That scare me because I don't know where the children are. Okay, that's good. Um, and and judge, I just I not tell me they're taken to different houses. Thank you. And so, Judge, that, that concludes my uh, entry of evidence uh, um, at, at this time. All right, Ms. Bustos, now is the time that you ask Mr. Lanche questions. It's going to be difficult, I know, because you're going to want to argue with him. You have to pose questions to him, okay? So you can take yourself off of mute and ask him a question okay i what i'm sorry i'm sorry this is a lot um why i just want to know why he tried why you want to hurt me and lie on me Objection, Your Honor. So, so Ms. Bustos, that I know this is difficult, but you have to ask him a question that's that's relevant to the testimony that he's given. If you don't have any questions for him, that's fine. I can hear. No. You. Okay. All right. Then, do you just want to testify? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I actually, I take, oh, um, I actually stay in Griffin County. I was there with my mother before she passed away August and what well, last year of August and he knew where I was. He brought the kids over. Um, I was in and out the hospital for sickle cells attacks and he would bring, my mom told him he couldn't come because Obeth would have a recorder in his pocket and she said he came in there trying to dog me out to her and she told him to leave her house. It was a lady from the school came, a counselor came to my house asked can we settle this. I said I wanted to keep this out of court because if we, I wanted to communicate as two humans and try to work it out I have proof that in pictures, I take my kids seven hundred dollars worth of food. I sent it to the uh, defense case worker. She uh, she wrote off on it. She was like, "He told me you didn't do it." I said, "I did." I said, "I bring it every time. I record it and I take pictures." Obes told me. Um, I asked Obes, "Can he come get the kids?" He told me no because he don't have any gas. I gave him gas money, which I never got back which I'm not worried about. Um, Selena, the reason, so I had picked up Selena and my boys on December 22nd. I had them for the whole holidays, like Christmas, New Year's. He knew everything. He, I was keeping him up to date. I let him talk to his kids. I did everything in my might. I tried to talk to him. And only thing what I was getting back was, don't you have a daughter? Don't you have a daughter? I was like, yes, I just had a daughter. He's my son. Don't you want to keep your daughter? And I was like, what that supposed to mean? He told me if I don't bring my kids, he would go to the police station. But when the police called me, they asked where I was the mother of Selena. I said, yes. But the police didn't know everything because Obeth was telling him partial of the story. So the caseworker and the therapist called the police personally and told them what was going on. And that's when the police called and apologized to me and said, don't worry about it. I told the police that I wanted to take the kids back so they could go to school. I'm not trying to hold my kids and get school. That's why I said if they didn't want to go back, I was going to enroll them in school out here, which I did. I talked to the um, kids' school 
They sent paperwork over to Spoiling County. They got Selena enrolled. They called me not too I went last week and told me why Selena wasn't in Spoiling County. I told her I took her back to her father. And the young lady who took Selena and my kids back was a friend of mine with the college I, who I stay with like now after I left my mom's house when she passed. I feed my kids Selena before she went home. I clothed, I bathed her, I clothed her, and I did her hair. And I bought new shoes. And not only that, Obed is kindly upset because I don't want to be in a relationship with him. I had a whole nother baby and with a whole new person. So he been giving me hard times ever since. And I don't get why all these lies is coming up. I have testimony with my kids. I recorded my kids saying, my daddy making me lie on you. So he was like, but I be wanting to tell the truth. So Lena said that my dad beat me in the head with a hanger and locked me in a closet. I have proof of everything. So I, and then he said, I'm, I've am i been hitting him. I haven't even been around Obed to hit him. If I go meet Obed, I meet him with my baby father or a friend because I don't trust him. Last time I tried to meet him at his house, Obed put me in his Damn, room. Come on, stop. One second. Watch me show this. The, the interpreter lost a part of the, like, the baby father, something like that. And after that, I lost uh, the sequence. With, with her child father. Say what? She goes to meet him with her current baby father, is what she said. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. After I meet um, Obez, I went by myself once. Um, Obez put me in his room and tried to have physical sex with me. I told him no. He was like, you can't tell me no. That's the reason I, when the lady talked to me, I had a police to come out there. They escorted my kids out the house, put them in the car. Cause they said his house wasn't clean. And my daughter was sleeping in the bed with him. And so was my kids here with me. They sleep separate. And I went over there. I got pictures of when his, I went over there, was roaches everywhere. It was trash. Everywhere. I cleaned up his part of the house and then I left. Me and my cousin sat there and waited on Obes to get there. Obes told me he was like 30 minutes down the street. I was there for five and a half hours waiting. And I was getting off of work. I, I got fired from my job. My kids were calling my phone early in the morning around eight o'clock saying, mommy, I'm hungry. I used to get off of work and I had to make up an excuse to get off of work and take food over there, wait for him to get off and leave. I have pictures of that too. Um, Obes told me that he needs some money. Objection. I gave him money. I saying. bought Just please say it's uh, Judge, it's a hearsay objection, but, it, but even more broadly than that, Judge, just so I'm clear, this, this, this is closing arguments? I'm not real sure, honestly. Ma'am, ma so... And like I said, I have a witness. What did you need to respond to, ma'am, is the, like the evidence, the bruises on the children's legs and things like that. I mean, that wasn't me. So who was it? I left my kids with a friend named Keisha Bright, where Keisha knew Kurt. I had went to work. I was working at Little Caesars. She told me that she popped my kids. I told her that's not going to happen. I took my kids home. That's when Obes called me and said, oh, my kids got bruises and stuff. I would never put my hand on my kid. That's a never. Okay, so home. So you're telling me that Keisha. Rakeisha. She put the bruises on your on those children. My son Obes told me that she hit him. And I confirmed it with Obes. I said that. Miss Keisha renewed, and then she told. Then the lady came to Keisha house and tried to speak to Keisha, which was a defense case for sure. Keisha started blowing up and stuff, so I wound up leaving her house because me and her had roommate together, and I went going for that. You went finna hit my kids, so Judge, yes, I I'd like to move home. for a directed verdict. We have an admission that she left the kids with someone that abused her kids. I, 
I don't think there's any evidence. How long did you stay with this lady knowing this lady was hitting your children? No, man, he, she, I knew her as a childhood. She's older than me. She's my aunt's age. Um, I stayed with her for a year. I took my kids over there for the summer. I asked for a babysitter. I paid her. I've been knowing Keisha for a long time. And Keisha was babysitting my kids. And I went to work, came back, and I wound up taking her home after what Obes told me. Ma'am, did you see these marks on your children? No, I did not see. Obed told me she popped them in his hand. But I told her, I don't like people hitting on my kids. Me and her got into an argument. I left her. I packed up my stuff. I left her house. I told her that, I told the police that she was hitting on my kids. I even told him her whole name. I said, you need to report her. I said, we can go down there together and report her because it ended. I don't like people touching my kids. Well, Ms. Bustos, why didn't you report her? I did. I said a police came to the house. The police was there. It was reported in Stone Mountain. Judge, I'd like to renew my motion for directed verdict. Any, yeah, anything else, Ms. Bustos? He wants, me to, he wants me to go ahead and make a decision because you've admitted that you were staying with someone who was abusing the children. I don't abuse my kids. I love my kids. They have a sister and an oldest brother with me who's not been in any harm. Objection, judge, non responsive. Yeah. Do you have any, ma'am? Do you have a response to residing somewhere where the lady that you were residing with abused the children? She stays in life all year. Does she still come around you? And these no, people? she cannot. Yeah, yeah, she she no, ya no puede venir. Been around me. Ya no está usando. For years. But these bruises were somewhere in 2022, Mr. Gillespie? That's my understanding, Judge. No, I was pregnant. I wasn't beating my kids. And I just had lost my mother and my cousin a week apart. So I was in an emotional breakdown. So, no, well, I did not. I understand that. And I'm very sorry for your loss. But how did the bruises end up on them? In just I don't know about those bruises. And I'm being honest. I really don't. I was pregnant. And I had my daughter last year of July the 6th. <clears throat> Any, anything else, Ms. Bustos, at all that you want to tell me? I just want us to co parent. I don't want to be in court. Like, I don't, my kids have a place to stay over here. They with their father. I'm not trying to bash nobody in. I just want a, a court order saying who can get the kids on this day, who can get them on that day, because I'm tired of going through court. I've been trying to do my part, and Obeth's been still breaking me down and bringing up liars. I don't want to be with Obeth. I promise you. I feel like I was forced. I was 17. Okay. He was 30-something years old. Miss, all right. So, Mr. Gillespie, right now, what order is it that places these children with Mr. Uh, Lanche? I'm sorry. I'm probably just following you. That, that, that was by default, Your Honor. There's no formal order. I, I mean, I guess you could say it's the defect safety the plan. Defect right? safety plan. Yeah, so, but that, that's but really he does not. plan on filing something else more permanent. Yeah, and I will take care of that. And I, I assure the court that. All right. So I'm going to put this in place. Uh, my, do you, do you, my, Mr. Gillespie, do you have the uh, an order in Word? Or if I send you an order, do you mind send, uh, filling it out? My case manager hasn't turned her camera on in a very long time. It's very sick. I don't mind at all, Judge. Thank she's you. She's probably asleep. <laughs> Last time we were finished with court, she woke up. She, she was over one of those little nitty So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not going to make her do that now. No uh, problem. Okay. If you want to type it up and send it to me, and uh, Ms., uh, Ms. Um, Bustos, okay. if you want to place your email in the chat, we'll send you copies of the order. And, um, and Judge and judge, just so I'm clear, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to first receive a form by email. Yeah, we can, I can. If you put your email in the chat, I can send you the order in Word, and then you can just fill it out. 
That'd be ideal. Thanks, Judge. I'll do it right now. Yeah, if you want to place your email in the chat, I'll email it to you. We'll put it in place. And um, if you want to just put in there that any, um, if you're going to file a family case that's here in Fulton County, the judge can make changes, talk, anything like that that they deem necessary. Perfect. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Bustos, do you want to place your email in the chat and we'll email you a copy? I placed it in the chat already. It's com. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Um, and if we have yours in the chat, Mr. Gillespie, y'all can leave. Uh, stay healthy and safe. And it's, uh, you can just email the order back to me and we'll get it um, signed. I absolutely will. Thanks, Judge. Thank you. Yeah. I got a question. Y'all didn't want to speak to my witness? No, oh, ma'am. All right. That does conclude my business, if I could be excused. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Chavez. And you can tell Mr. Lanche that he can move. Señor Lanche, eso es todo.